Welcome to the Sayings of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. In this program, I will share part one of a message called My Sheep Hear My Voice, recorded live at Ingleside Church. One of the greatest discoveries in life is learning to hear the voice of God. From the dawn of creation, Adam and Eve were designed to hear the voice of God. The entrance of sin into the world did not stop God from wanting to talk to us. But sin has a way of hardening our hearts and making it more difficult for us to hear the voice of God. Yet Noah and the patriarchs clearly heard the voice of God. But at Mount Sinai, the people asked God to speak to Moses and not to them. You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 19. After that, the voice of God was heard through the judges and through prophets and through kings. After the prophet Malachi died, the voice of God was not heard for 400 years. Out of that silence came the voice of John the Baptist and of Jesus. Jesus came to destroy the lie that God cannot have a personal relationship with his people. Ask God to use this message to open your heart and your ears to hear his voice. Speaking to religious leaders, Jesus said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them in and they will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 16. Jesus was talking about the Jews and the Gentiles becoming one flock with him as their shepherd. Then he spoke about the importance of his crucifixion. The crucifixion was no surprise. It was in the plan of God the Father, and Jesus willingly participated. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received from my Father, John chapter 10 and verse 18. What a remarkable statement. It focuses for everyone that neither the Jews nor the Romans had any real authority over Jesus. Jesus willingly allowed himself to be crucified so he could pay for the sins of all the people of the world. This statement prepared the way for one of the most important conversations Jesus had with the religious leaders. At that time, the feast of the dedication took place in the temple. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the column of Solomon. I've had the privilege of walking in that colonnade and thinking about the words that Jesus said. It was the last major teaching that Jesus gave before he was crucified. So the Jewish leaders asked him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. John chapter 10, verse 24. And Jesus replied by saying, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not amongst my sheep. What scathing words to say to the religious leaders. John chapter 10, verse 25 and 26. I want to remind you that Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, had already said this to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. John chapter 3, verse 10. Now Jesus is ready to release one of his most precious sayings. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 10, verse 27. It is a beautiful thing to watch a shepherd call his or her sheep. You're accustomed to men being shepherds, but in many places in the Middle East, it's women's work. And it's beautiful to see sheep come to their shepherd because they hear the voice of the one calling them. They come running because they do not respond to the voice of a stranger. Jesus wants people to hear his voice, especially so for those who are 
his followers. You can hear the voice of Jesus. Invite Jesus to say something to you right now. You'll know it's his voice as he speaks to you, whether you're in the house or watching online. Say with me, Father, open my heart to hear the voice of Jesus speaking to me as I'm listening or speak to me as I'm listening. If you just heard the voice of Jesus, raise your hand in the house. <laughs> yeah, look at that. And if you heard the voice online, message me. Hearing God's voice usually begins with Jesus saying, follow me. This is how all of the disciples were called. They heard Jesus say, follow me. And something inside of them said, I need to do that. I remember when Jesus called me and I knew I needed to respond. I knew it was not my voice. It was definitely not Satan's voice. It was the voice of Jesus. As I'm speaking, Jesus is opening the hearts of people to follow him. Last week, I was speaking with a man in Zambia, and I asked him a question I often ask. Have you already had the joy of following Jesus and having your name written in the book of heaven? I was so surprised. He said, nope. <laughs> and then I heard the voice of Jesus say to me, ask him, is there anything stopping you from following Jesus right now? And he said, no. And so I shared the message of Jesus with him. What a blessing. Sadly, for many people, hearing Jesus call them to follow him is often the last time they hear the voice of Jesus. That is not what Jesus wants. He wants to talk to you every day. Listen to why Jesus wants you to hear his voice. It's because he knows us. And that word for knowing is an intimate knowledge, not a head knowledge, but a knowing about everything that you're going through Jesus knows everything about you, not to condemn you, but to help you overcome the challenges that you are facing. Jesus is not ashamed of you because he knows everything about you. Because his invitation is based upon already knowing everything about you, you can follow him without fear that one day he'll discover something about you that will cause him to reject you. You could never have that experience with God because he already knows the worst about you and is committed to calling you to follow him. Hearing the voice of Jesus is the first step towards becoming one of his followers. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. John chapter 10, verse 28. Usually I don't ask people if they have been saved. It is true that Jesus came in his own words to seek and to save the lost. That was his mission. But his method was to offer people the gift of eternal life. It is a gift that by its very nature can never end. This is a very powerful saying of Jesus. There's nothing like it in the Quran. Listen to this tragic saying of Muhammad. I am nothing new amongst the prophets. What will happen to me and my followers? I do not know. I am only a plain warner. And most people know the Quran by the chapter names, which is called dunes or hills. And those reading it by chapter number, it's chapter 46 and ayat verse 9. What a tragic statement. Jesus knew what would happen to him after the crucifixion. He returned to the Father just as he was promised. And he promised that all of his followers would be with him in heaven. We can know where we are going because Jesus knew where he was going. We are going directly to heaven to live in the presence of the Father for all of eternity. Jesus continued by saying, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. John chapter 10 verse 29. You don't need to worry about slipping through the hands of Father. His hands are strong enough to hold you no matter what you face. When my children were younger, they faced many dangers they didn't even know about. One of these dangers is the simple thing of crossing a street. When we would come to a crossing, I would say to them, please hold my hand and keep Daddy safe. And of course, they gladly held my hand. But who was keeping them safe? It was me. When you put your hands in the hand of Jesus, 
He will keep you safe no matter what you're facing. Jesus finished saying these words, I and the Father are one. John chapter 10, verse 30. This is one of the great mysteries about the life of Jesus. People back then and even today can't figure out what it means. I'll just be honest, while I don't understand it, I know exactly what it means. When we hear the voice of Jesus, we are hearing the voice of God. And when we put our hands in the hand of Jesus, we are putting our hands in the hand of God. This is a powerful saying that Jesus has. It changed my life. I've learned to hear his voice and follow him no matter what he asks me to do. I hope part one of this message has been a blessing to you. Next week, we'll continue with this message. In part two, I'll give some teaching on how to increase our ability to hear the voice of God and teach how we can discern between our voice, the voice of Satan, and the voice of the Father. Let me take a few moments and pray for you. Father, I ask that you would open the ears of people who have been longing to hear your voice. You have an internal desire to hear the voice of God. You've been told you can't hear the voice of God. But deep in your heart, you know you want to hear the voice of God. I open your ears to hear his voice. You have a dream or a vision, and you hear God speaking to you. Do whatever he tells you to do. Because Jesus knew where he was going, we can know where we are going. Ask Jesus to be your Savior today. Thank him for dying for you in your place. Receive him now. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin and make me your child so that I too can receive the gift of eternal life and go directly to heaven when I die. If you just received Jesus as your Savior, write to me and let me know about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the sayings of Jesus. If you would like to hear all of this message or previous messages on the sayings of Jesus, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan.